Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today we have a returning special guest, my buddy Way. And Way has been one of the guys that I've been practicing doing some welding with. Our first project together was fixing my 4x4 Labs rear bumper that the moron that I bought the truck from messed up. They didn't weld it right and the swing arm that was supporting the 37 inch tire was starting to break up the bumper because it wasn't welded correctly to support the cylinder that supports the swing arm. So we did a Frankenstein, cut up the bumper and went in there and welded some gussets in. We didn't film it because how many guys are going to end up buying a 4x4 Labs bumper that some moron welded wrong? So we didn't see the purpose of showing that, but we are going to show some welding today. And what we're going to do is we are going to weld on some total chaos gussets on my knuckles right here here's both of the knuckles off my rig i have the manual hub swap so it's going to look a little different than way's way doesn't have the manual hubs on his so what these total chaos gussets do is they help support this ring lots of people that wheel hard have cracked this ring and then basically it leaves you stranded because you can't even tow your rig out because your whole knuckle is flopped out because it's broke. The Total Chaos Gusset goes on like this and you end up welding it on the top and along the spine and on the bottom. We're gonna do one additional thing that I learned from my buddy Anwar and my buddy CJ in Southern California. They add a little strap that encompasses the whole ring. So now you have protection all around the whole ring and it's just a little bit of extra insurance so this ring can't break on you when you're out there wheeling out in BFE and you don't want to get stuck. So we're not going to show pulling the knuckles off the vehicles because we already have videos that show that. If you click on the link above, you can reference our front wheel bearing replacement video and it will walk you through all the steps of getting the knuckles off the vehicle. If you happen to have manual hubs like I do, then you can click on the link above also for our manual hub swap and you can see how those go on and come off. One thing that Way likes to do is he likes making his own stuff. So he actually made his own custom gussets out of some metal that he had at his house in Alameda. He's gonna showcase his fabrication skills and I'm just gonna cheat and use the ones that are made by Total Chaos. So with all that said, we're gonna get these cleaned up. We're gonna have to use some abrasive pads to strip all the corrosion and paint to where we have nice, fresh, clean metal that we can weld on. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna break out a DeWalt angle grinder and we also have a Milwaukee quarter inch die grinder that we're gonna use and we're just gonna start cleaning up all the areas where we're gonna need to weld. One thing to note about these Total Chaos gussets is they're not exactly a perfect fit. I heard this from Sean who warned me that they don't exactly fit perfect. So we did a little grinding in spots. We fitted up onto the knuckle. We saw where there was maybe like a little high side. We took a grinder wheel and ground off a little bit and just kept on doing that to where we got a much tighter fit with the gusset to the knuckle. And as you can see, we cleaned off all the metal really well so we get a good weld. When you're welding, you want the material you're welding really clean. So you want to clean off all the mill scale and dirt and rust and oils. And then another thing you do to prep is you take some acetone and you clean off the surface really well. So I actually took a buffing pad and cleaned off the mill scale of this total chaos too. You want the material as clean as possible. That's going to get you better welds. One thing to note for people that have the manual hub swap like I do is there's a needle bearing in there and this was kind of an afterthought. I thought, oh, I'm taking off all this metal and debris and stuff and some of it could end up in your needle bearing. So a good thing to do is stuff a paper towel or a rag down in there so none of the debris gets in your little needle bearing or just anywhere in here. You could put another rag on top of this to protect it from debris from you buffing the control arm the debris ending up inside this cavity right here. When it comes to welding the gussets onto your spindles, Total Chaos recommends that you do a little welding on one and then you switch over to your other spindle and do a little welding on the other. And that's to prevent you from overheating the spindle and potentially warping it. 
The other thing that you have to consider is you don't want to get the spindle too hot because you still have your wheel bearing in there. You don't want to get that thing so hot that it liquefies the grease and washes the grease out of there. So heed their warning and do a little welding on one, maybe do like a two or three inch weld stop move over to the other one, do a little welding, and then just bounce back and forth, letting a little bit of cooling time go in between. And that will be your safest bet not to overheat the spindle. Another thing that's not totally clear from the instructions on Total Chaos's website is they say that you weld the top, you weld the gusset along the spine, and then they say you weld both sides of the bottom. And that doesn't really make sense because you can't get to both sides of the bottom. You can get on the front side, but the back side, there's no way you're going to get your welding tip in there. I think what they meant to say is that you just weld it on the top because it's hard to get on the underside of the top welds. But then along the spine, you weld it on both sides, and that's what I chose to do. I also learned that from my buddy Amwar. He suggested to weld on both sides on the vertical part of the gusset. So I got in as far as I could with the welder on both sides. On the back side, you can't get all the way to the bottom because your tip can't go in all the way to the very bottom. Where the end meets up with the spindle, it goes into a tight V, you can't get your welder in there. So basically what Way and I did, as I would weld a little on one of my spindles, switch over to Way's spindle, he would weld a little bit and that's how we got a little bit of cooling in between us switching back and forth and using the welder. And that's all I want to say about the welding procedure. Just take your time, don't be in a rush, and overheat your spindle. So we think we're now ready to start doing some welding, finally. But you don't want to rush yourself when you're welding. You want to do all that proper prep work because then your welds are just going to be much better, much stronger. So. Don't skip the prep work and not clean up your material really well, getting the mill scale and any other contaminants off the steel. You want nice, clean, shiny, bare steel to weld on. Because I found that I have a difficult time seeing the welding pole, there's a couple things I did to assist me in being able to see better. One is I put a cheapo headlamp on here. I just taped it on here with some electrical tape. Maybe I could figure out a better way. Sometimes people put like Velcro on there. I just did it like this using the existing strap. And then another thing is they sell these magnifiers so you can basically slide it in there. The only problem is you have to get your face pretty close to the material or everything's blurry. This is a two times magnifier. So with the light and the magnifier, I can see the welds a little bit better. So that might be something you should consider if you're also having trouble seeing when you're welding. Wade volunteered to go first. So this is his custom gusset that he made out of some steel. Looks pretty nice. We measured the steel that he used to make the gusset. It's 3 16 So we're going to go with the settings that the Hobart welder suggests for 3 16 And let's go over to the cover and see that. So we're welding steel. We're using solid wire. We're using a gas mixture of 75% argon, 25% CO2. We're welding at 230 volts. And at first I was using 035 wire, but I since switched based off the recommendation of a journeyman welder. And he said he uses 024 wire for pretty much all automotive applications because you're never really welding much thicker than 316 steel on automotive. So if I go over here to 316, I should set the voltage at 6 and have the wire speed at 80. I'll switch it to 6 and I'll turn up the wire speed to 80. And then I have to turn my gas on. How much gas do you want coming out? 20? I do 25. 25? Okay, so I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to start this thing up and I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to want to see the needle drop down to 25. Let me show you how we do it. So we'll turn the machine on. And then you just pull the trigger while looking at the gauge and you'll see. So that's not enough. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. It's a little high. There it is, about 25. 
So what you want to do for these gussets, whether you make them yourself or you're using the Total Chaos, is you want to put a series of tack welds, get it in the position you want before you start laying down a bunch of beads. So tack it in multiple places because the steel could start warping a little bit if you don't. So tack it maybe every few inches along the spine of both sides and then start doing your actual beads. All right, as you can see, he's got a tack there. He's got a tack down there. And he's got one there and one there. And based off of the length of his gusset, that's probably sufficient. Now he's gonna get welding. Let's see how he does. What do you think, Wes? You gonna lay some dimes? Oh yeah, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> and because you're not gonna be able to see anything other than a bunch of sparks flying, I'm not going to actually try to film this. I'm just going to show you what his welds look like after the fact. All right, all right. Don't feel cheated. You're going to be okay. So here's Way's Mambo Gusset. This thing's beefy. This is like 316th, huh? Yeah. This is his version of the additional gusset. So he just did a 90 degree angle and it's going to work. It's going to really support the upper part of the knuckle really well. You can see what he did to get this bend is he put a couple relief cuts in here to where it could bend easier and then he just filled those in with a weld that's what those three vertical welds are we're finally done welding and here's some of my welding handiwork so this is the upper part got some decent looking beads there and there's a little bit of slop right there it's kind of i was getting more on the knuckle and yeah doesn't look too bad what do you guys think? And then go ahead and flip it over way. So I'll show you the little additional gusset. I got some diamond plating from a fab shop and it was about the right size material equal to what the gusset is from Total Chaos. It's about an eighth inch. What I did is I got the length I want. Three quarters seemed to be about right. Welded it on this side, kind of lining it up with the top. And then I took a ball peen hammer and I just hit it to the shape of the upper part of the knuckle. And then when I got it all the way over to here, I grabbed it with a couple clamps, tacked it, and then finished the welds on the top. And they're not bad. I went ahead and welded on the inside too. So you can get about as deep as right there and then you can't get the tip of your welder in deeper. So decent welds. I'm pretty happy with my performance. How do you like my hair? Now we have to prep these things and paint them so they don't rust. So we're going to clean them up really well and then just use a combination primer and paint spray can, like a flat black or a whatever. I think there's another one that's kind of close, but who cares? Just get it in a black color. You could paint it pink with purple polka dots if you want, whatever floats your boat, but we're going to paint them black. Okay, so here is the steering knuckle back on the rig with the cool new Total Chaos gusset and then my own little addition that I learned from my buddy Anwar and CJ. And mine's diamond plating, so it's cooler than Anwar's, ha <laughs> ha. One thing that was interesting is that I was actually able to get this brake line reconnected. What I did is with Way's help, I got the bolt started on the same boss that it screws into but it comes too close here. So once I got the bolt started with this help, I got in here with a pry bar and I pried the bracket out this direction to the left. And so now the brake line clears just enough. And so if I ever had to take this brake line off, I would be able to do that and get on there with a flare nut wrench. But it made it a little bit harder to get on the bolt back there. But yeah, it worked out pretty good. So I was able to get the brake line reconnected just by tweaking the bracket. And then I went ahead and slid on the ABS sensor to the same part on the knuckle, but then you can't bolt it to anything, so I used a zip tie through there and I just zip tied it really tight. And that's it. This is the cool mod that will prevent you from breaking your steering knuckle and getting stuck out in BFE. All right, we're all done with this job. It's not a really tough job unless you don't know how to pull your steering knuckles off. 
and then it might be a little bit of a tough job for you if you don't have the knowledge or the tools but if you use one of our videos to know how to get the knuckles off and you own the tools necessary to get them off you should be successful in being able to weld them provided you've done your due diligence and have practiced some welding before you take on a project like this so to get to this point I practiced a lot with scrap metal and got to the point where I felt like okay I think I'm making some pretty good welds and now I'm ready to do some welding on my truck and potentially other people's rigs and feel confident that the welds are gonna hold strong there are people that choose to keep the spindles on the rig and weld it that way I would not suggest that because that's just making it much harder for you to weld them take the time get the knuckles off the vehicle so you can comfortably weld them on a nice welding table and a well-lit area to give yourself the best chance of making some nice strong welds that are going to hold that spindle gusset on really strong and it's going to protect your steering spindle from breaking when you're out wheeling and having fun out at BFE. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean and special guest Way. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye bye. Sick mods and happy welding people. Peace out and bye bye.